Welcome to On The Curbs, I'm your host Timo Alvarez Daly and this week's guest is none other than the Colombian racing driver Tatiana Calderon. She's raced in Formula 2 in the past and currently competes in both Super Formula and the World Endurance Championship. She also recently got a test drive in IndyCar, which we go into much more detail later on in the chat. We caught up ahead of the six hours of Monza to chat about her motorsport career so far, what it was like racing at Le Mans, her racing heroes, the challenges she's had to overcome so far, and much more. I hope you enjoy our conversation. Hi Tatiana, thank you for being here today. How are you? Oh, thanks for having me now. All good. Looking forward to this weekend, actually. I can imagine. Um, before we get into that, though, I wanted to ask you, uh, what got you into motorsport in the first place? Well, I think, um, you know, it was a little bit by chance. I um, mean, my, my dad has always been a, a lover of motorsport, but he never really had the chance to race. And it was actually my sister, Paula, who took me to a rental Goga track near our house in Colombia. And we bought a five-minute ticket and, and I fall in love with it. So that's how I first got started. It's all Paula's fault then. Exactly. Yeah, she's, she's at fault. Um, I think, uh, yeah, I have a lot to thank her for. Uh, probably my parents not so much. <laughs> <laughs> That was a great little thing there. You just get the uh, the one taste of it, you get the one chance, and then you're you're hooked for life. Yeah, that's the thing with motorsport. You know, I think uh, sometimes I think they say they compare with children, does that to you? And uh, yeah, the minute you you get into it, you sort of can't stop. And yeah, here we are, uh, sixteen or seventeen years later, <laughs> one thing more. Well, I was talking of wanting more. You recently had an IndyCar test. How was that? Oh, it was an incredible experience. I think, you know, I've been so lucky to, to be able to drive so many cars. So I, I was very thankful with uh, with Rocket and with AJ Foyt for, for making it happen in, in such short notice because it was sort of kind of like last minute. And I think it was on one of the only cars in terms of single seater that I had not driven. And on top of that, it was, yeah, uh, a great, a great experience, a good test for me. So, um, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm still over the moon. Uh, obviously, now focus on, on what I have in 2021. But it's, it's always good to, to have that experience it's a, in such a great car. And so you say you focus on the rest of 21. Does that mean any deals in place for IndyCar for next year or? Uh, no, it's still early days, you know. I think everyone was happy with the with the test, including myself. Um, so, you know, it never hurts to uh, for somebody to to realize that I could be quick there too. So, you know, we'll see. But at the moment, I'm I'm enjoying every day as it comes. Um, I think it's better to have to have more options, and I hope that they can consider me for it. But it's uh, early days still, and and like I said, I think, you know, you have to focus on, on this year, which is the LMP2 program with Richard Mill and the uh, Super Formula and, and see where that takes me. So you set up uh, my segue nicely there for me. I was going to say you're currently racing in the LMP2 category for the World Endurance Championship um, and in the all-female team as well with Sophia Flush and Bites Gavissa. What's that whole experience been like for you? No, I think it's been a, a, a great experience. I mean, I was very new to endurance last year, so to have that experience, to, to be able to, to do Le Mans, which I think is a, in everyone's wishes, in every driver's wishes to do it. And on top of that, we took a, we took a top 10 finish. Um, I started the race, finished it raced against my all-time hero, which I'm also racing now, again against Montoya. So um, I think the WEC is, is a really strong 
um, driver lineups. So it's um, endurance as well is, is a different challenge compared to single seaters. And I think I've learned a lot this couple of years. So I'm very thankful with with Rich Army Racing and, and with the FIA Women in Motorsport Commission for, for making this opportunity possible for us and obviously trying to take good results this year. Um, still, uh, you know, the big one coming up, so I'm, I'm mm. very excited. Mm, for sure, as, lo- as long as you've got that opportunity there, I think uh, you've proven that you're going to take it with both hands and just go for it. Um, you're saying you got to, you were obviously in Le Mans last year, did you get an extra level of satisfaction from being the one to start and finish the race with the team? Yeah, I mean, it's it's always special, you know, because uh, it was all on the same weekend uh, without practice, three rookies in the car, and I got to start the race. Um, I battled a little bit with Montoya on that first <laughs> thing. Um, then That's another finish. box tick for you, I think, is it? <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, um, yeah, I drove... Um, quite a lot in the night as well then to finish the, the race to cross to cross the line it's a, it's a big big emotion from everybody and i got to to experience that all in in one day so um a very it was long, very very special yeah <laughs> definitely it's uh, unbelievable that it's it's 24 hours it felt like a lifetime but um it was uh, really special, so for sure, I think um, I couldn't have wished for, for a better start in terms of my limo experience. Um, but it certainly, you know, we, we aim higher this year and, and see where, if, if limo chooses us, because I think it chooses. <laughs> um, it's such a special place. Yeah, I was, I was going to say sometimes it's just an achievement in itself to, to finish the race because the, the track is just so tough on cars itself over the whole 24 hours. So the fact that you've got to have that get the whole experience, have some battles on track and still make it to the finish all in one piece is, is testament to itself. Um, and breaking down barriers in the process for you with the with an all-female team. Um, do you see yourself then as a role model for the women looking to get into motorsport? Like I, I never thought about it until like you know like recently that I get so many messages from from young girls, uh, from their parents, encouraging me and thanking me for inspiring them. So I feel like I have that responsibility as well now, uh, a, a good sort of pressure or responsibility to have to encourage young girls to to follow their dreams, to follow their path in motorsports, and to help them. You know, keep opening doors for us in the sport because I think we this is one of the only ones where we can compete in equal terms, and and I think it should be available for for many more uh, girls. So Definitely. I I take that um, as a really good energy and something to to fight for um, as well as as my own career and, and my own personal satisfaction. And you're quite a a good example of that because I mean the opportunity was there but you could have easily not not gone there if you hadn't just gone karting that first time so it's just making sure that everyone is aware that the opportunities are there as well when they come along so because I mean look look how different you, your life could have been if uh, you hadn't gone karting that one time. Yeah it only takes that moment to get people hooked up and know that they they can have a chance and I want to create that so I want to try to create that for other people for other girls for yeah in general for um for young kids um to really you know follow follow their passion I think I've been very lucky I found it really early in life I think you're definitely acting as a good as a good role model so far so I can I can can back that could keep that up um (laughs) You were also racing in a super formula, like you were saying earlier. Um, what's a good racing story you can tell us from your time there so far? Well, I think, you know, I before I signed the contract, and that's also thanks to, to Rocket and, um, and the trust that the team gave me without knowing me. I had never been to Japan. I had never driven that car, uh, those circuits. 
and I signed a contract late of beginning of 2020, 2020 and uh, it was a big adventure, you know, it's uh, a completely different culture, um, it's uh, a really tough car to drive, it's, uh, yeah, it was a, a big uh, a big challenge. I didn't know how good or bad it was going to turn out to be, but um, I've really enjoyed being in Japan. Uh, obviously, it was a big risk because also it was a new team and I have no teammate. So everything that you could uh, put against against me, it, so, it so was it all like in there. It in the deep end quite, quite, quite deep indeed. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So I was you know, on top of that, it was a difficult year in F2, uh, where yeah, I was not really confident um, with the team, and, and everything was not working out for me. So um, when I took that decision and I did my first test in, I remember it was Fuji, um, on this beast of a car, I thought like, oh my God, what have you done? Uh, <laughs> What is this, you know? Uh, but it was really tough. But I think tough is what makes you a better driver. And now that I look back, I'm, I'm very thankful. And I don't regret the decision I took to, to go in um, really hard. And, and to then, you know, make your way through uh, and improve. It's it's a, a great feeling. And is uh, in Japan, you know, only my engineer speaks a little bit of English. So it's it's a huge challenge. So quite a kind of, I mean, just every every kind of challenge I can throw at you there, and then for you to still be able to succeed in that must give you kind of another level of satisfaction, but also just proves to everyone that uh, that you, you you can do it, and that it doesn't you don't have to be a man to to do that. And so kind of success on several fronts, really. Yeah, I mean, it it was a huge confidence for me to to be able to to compete like you know it's it's a really tough series a really tough car uh to drive it's the closest to formula one in terms of of speed in the corners and downforce and a lot of people doubt it you know what this little girl arrives in japan and everyone was like is she jumping in this car sort of like yeah even laughing sometimes you know that uh there has not been a girl who who has done the the whole championship? Even though if I even though I I missed a few races this year and last year due to due to COVID, but to to do so things not, that not really no fault of your own though, is it? So it's, exactly. Uh, and um, so then you're saying it's the closest thing to Formula One in in speed in the corners. Is F1 still part of the dream for you? Yes. Um, and I think that's always been my dream, my goal. And there are many ways to go to Formula One. Um, and I don't think it's it's never over until you give up. And I'm not ready to give up on that dream yet. Oh, and why should you? I mean, I think with all the experience you're getting as well at the moment, you're, uh, you're turning yourself into a very good rounded driver overall. So hopefully that will count for something when the next opportunity comes along for you. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate those those comments and, the, and that energy. A couple of uh, fun questions just to, to round off then. Um, what's been your favorite track to race at so far? Well, I think, um, you know, Macau is certainly one of the, yeah, one like the good ones. <laughs> and Le Mans, I, I think it's, it's a very special place. Um, high speed, slow speed, it's a, it's a unique place. So I think those two, I would say, are on top of my list and and quite very challenging. Good. Suzuka as well is quite challenging. Uh, what do you like to do to relax? Uh, I have a hard time relaxing. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> I think you can keep me happy with uh, playing tennis, or going out for a good coffee, um, just nature freely sort of recharges me. Who's the better teammate, Sophia or Baitska? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, please don't put that on. <laughs> oh, God. They're equal. I, I, I don't want to get in trouble. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> That's uh, a try. Uh, 
Okay, then uh, finally, what's your favorite song? I think Viva la Vida from Coldplay. Or will be. Okay, or nice. will be. Good <laughs> well, it's, it's been a pleasure chatting to you, Tatiana. Uh, wish you the best of luck this weekend with WEC and for the rest of the 21 season. And I'll speak to you again soon. Oh, thank you very much for having me for your time. Uh, it's been a nice, nice talk, and yeah, we we keep in touch. It was a pleasure chatting with Tatiana. You can really tell how passionate she is about racing and how much it means to her. I hope that Alfa Romeo or some other Formula 1 team give her the chance to get behind the wheel of an F1 car soon. I want to thank her again for coming onto the show, and I wish her and the rest of the Richard Millet WEC team the best of luck for the rest of the 2021 season. Join me again soon when I'll be chatting to another famous face from the world of motorsport. In the meantime, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe, and check out the other videos on the On The Curves YouTube channel. Away from YouTube, you can find me over on Drive Tribe, and feel free to follow me on Instagram at t.albers.daily.drivetribe. You can also find me over on GP Grandstand TV, where I'm part of their weekly podcast. Thank you for listening, and I'll see you again soon.